What's up, y'all? It's your boy Montoya Smith, a.k.a. Black Socrates. Just show y'all my Korean game shirt. <laughs> Shout out to that queen. Do some invites, as always. And once I do the invites, we're going to get this thing started. Do some invites, y'all. These young people, man, they showing me some things, man. Showing me a lot. Uh, showing me a whole lot. I'm just doing some invites. I'm gonna do the invites, and I'm gonna get to y'all. But these millennials, as we call them, they smarter than we think. Uh, some of the things that some of the assessment I keep hearing people from my, my generation are not that I'm much. Well, I don't feel like I'm old, but either way. Uh, some of the things or some of the conversations I keep having with people around my age, I'm 46, hip-hop, you know, we the hip-hop generation, Generation X, whatever you want to call us. But a lot of the conversations I'm having with the young people, well, with people my age, I should say, uh, our assessments, in my opinion, are not necessarily correct of how we're, what we're seeing with the young people. Um, you know, obviously people f are feeling, you know, very divided over, you know, in a sense, these protests and things that are happening with the protests. There's people who, in a sense, are supportive of the protests, uh, those who are absolutely against them, um, those of us who are indifferent to a certain extent or, or maybe feel some kind of way about it but not necessarily voicing an opinion. But I definitely want to give y'all some game of what I'm peeping with these young people that I'm pretty sure most of us in our generation are missing. And uh, I'm just doing some invites. I'm going to do 10 more, and then I'm going to get to y'all. All right, here we go. Let's always do the countdown. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight nine, 10. All right, work with me, y'all. All right, it's cool. So, again, there's some things that we're missing, in my opinion, for our generation. Again, shout out to Queen Korean Gaines, obviously wearing that intentionally uh, for this dis quick discussion, some thoughts. Uh, I've been thinking these all day or whatever, and I said, you know, let me go ahead and get this off my, th off my mind as I'm getting ready for the show on Saturday, the Mental Dialogue Talk Show, just to uh, share that. It was like, how can we help black-owned businesses that were d damaged or destroyed during the protest? Um, so we are definitely looking forward to doing that show as I'm bringing on a couple of business owners whose, unfortunately, businesses were damaged during the protests here in Atlanta. Um, but an opportunity for us as a community, Mineral Out Community Club, to be able to hear their stories and support them. Uh, but that aside, what I wanted to talk about again is, you know, obviously, every, you know, I guess the funeral for George Floyd was today. Um, but anyway, with six days into protesting, if you will, around the country, up over 40 cities, um, different protests and things of that nature happen. And I and, and there's this sentiment that I hear amongst people my age who, and I've addressed this in a couple of video, a few other videos, but I just wanted to bring something to the table that the millennials are showing us that I, I don't think many of us are people. Because I'm hearing many of people from our, my generation saying, hey, what the kids are doing or that's not the way, or they're very upset about the burning and the looting. looting. And again, I wouldn't be bringing these owners on if it wasn't a valid concern. Um, and so we, we're saying to these young people, this is not the way. And I even seen somebody, this was actually made me do the post tonight. I see somebody say, you know, we got to teach them the ways of, you know, how Martin Luther King, you know, that name obviously keeps getting brought up. And, um, you know, clearly, um, if you know, in a sense, Martin Luther King didn't necessarily condemn riots because he got he always talked about the cause and what started them and he said and if you're going to condemn the riots it's 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 moral it's morally irresponsible to condemn the riots without equally condemning the actual conditions that created the riots or whatever that's a short paraphrase of how Martin Luther King so people have been using different versions of what Martin Luther King has said uh, in reference to what we're seeing today or whatever but here's the things let me go ahead and get to the point. So here's what the millennials have shown me. Whether you agree with the riot, agree with the protests that have, in a sense, turned into riots and turned into violence in some cases, or 
damage the properties, whatever. Every every protest have happened hasn't. But anyway, for our generation, we're big on that those protests have to be peaceful. Like that's you know that's kind of what's been geared into our mind. Uh, when, you know, knowing that for the most part we are far removed from uh, um, even what was happening in the civil rights movement, uh, and we understand that in a sense MLK the strategy was nonviolence. Uh, we're going to end up doing a show specifically about MLK and his strategy um, July 4th, so stay tuned for that. I won't go into the details of that here, um, but again, that's kind of where we, in a sense, as a, as a country and is, as an African-American community, that's where that sentiment is drawn from, in a sense, Martin Luther King's approach, and in a sense, his, his, his circle kept that going even after he tragically lost his life. Um, as some of the young people, you see one of the memes saying that, um, you know, what will MLK do? And I see one meme say, uh, we don't know because you killed him. You know what I mean? And that, that, that's just something that the millennials kind of have been floating around on social media. And and so that meme almost expresses, uh, in a sense, some of their distaste with, in a sense, our methods or even really technically, I would say the older generation, even above me, that's the idea of marching, protesting peacefully and having a peaceful protest. Um, clearly what we're seeing with a lot of the younger people, they you know, they're fed up after this, obviously seeing um, George Floyd die on film. I mean, the whole country saw it. And I want to make this very clear because I want to, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, most people that, I'll say this, I'm pretty literal. So I, I want to, I want to be very clear about what I'm about to say. Because again, I'm about to break down observations of what the millennials are doing that our that our generation and older are missing. So in me telling you these things, that I'm, and I'm, I'm setting it up because I want you to hear, hear me clear. When me explaining what the young people are doing or the observations that I'm seeing has nothing to do with whether I'm in support or not. This is me just explaining what they're doing that we're missing. And I'm willing to say why well, I think we are missing it. So, so going forward, as I explain this, understand this is not about whether I'm in support or not in support of the young people. Um, I, like Martin Luther King, don't waste time condemning because I understand. And some people take I understand to mean I'm okay with it. Don't put that on me. I just understand and I don't talk down on the youth because as I've, if you've seen my page, I've clearly said we gave them this world. If we get, you know, it, the blame, in my opinion, goes more on our generation because at the end of the day, if we gave them a world, if the same thing is still happening for them, that's what's happened for our generation, the generation before us, and the generation before that, then it's on us for handing them that world. Again, I'm not, it's not about excusing the approach. It's just understand if we're going to point the finger at them, then three come back at us because we gave them a world in which they feel the need to riot. So that's my stance. Let me get that out the way. Here's observations that I'm seeing and I'm actually impressed. It's not about being in support. I'm just being honest. I'm impressed with things that the young people are doing that I know for a fact our generation is not seeing. We're not seeing them because of our, um, our, it's not, it's not what I'm saying, our viewpoint, our, because, our, because of our historical context, here's the things that we're missing from the young people. So again, I'm still seeing older people on Facebook say, the youth are not doing this. First of all, the youth ain't on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook dogging out the youth, hoping they're going to hear what you got to say, you're really talking to the choir. That's just keeping it a buck. That's keeping it a whole 100 buck with how the youth get down. The youth ain't paying us no attention. Again, it may sound, again, I'm respecting how they're moving and my excitement in respecting how they're different. Again, don't take my fervor and my respect as whether I'm saying I'm supporting. I just want to let y'all see what I'm observing that I know our generation is missing. So for the youth, when we're sitting up there saying, oh, that's not the way, they're tearing up all the stuff. Uh, you know, that's our frustration. We're saying that's what they're doing. What is that proving? Um, you know, the disrespecting of George Floyd's legacy. He wouldn't want that. Um, and I see some of the you people, you say, if, if I get killed by the cops, I want y'all to burn shit down. So I don't, you know, so I'm not saying I know George Floyd. I'm just telling you how the youth are responding. They say, you know, like, how is 
for them, when we say that we're disrespecting his legacy and it's not the way, they're looking at us like, okay, this initial thing started out with this cop, we was waiting to see if he was going to get arrested, right? So let's think about Korean games. Let's think about all the other cops that have been in these situations where we're like um, Darren Wilson or whatever, Mike Brown, obviously the big famous one. And the whole thing was, not, you know, is he even going to be arrested? And then when he's arrested, it's just, then it's get out on bail right away, right? That's all it always is, right? You get out on bail right away. And then this, this is what we've left the youth with. All the scenarios and names that we can come up with outside of a few cops who have been prosecuted, prosecuted in the last couple of years. There have been a few cops prosecuted. But outside of those scenarios, the most famous ones that we have did hashtags and seen marches and seen even a few protests over the years, they stayed and relegated in one city in the past. But in the past, this is how our generation handled it. We was waiting to see if the grand jury was going to even take the cop to drop child. And in how many cases did we not even get past the grand jury? Eric Garner. We didn't get past the grand, uh, grand jury and Mike Brown. Like, so, so, so in a lot of cases, we got a whole bunch of scenarios of all these hashtags we've been putting up for years. I'll never forget this statement from Karinga Bailey. We, as African Americans, we are one bill of the way from being a hashtag. So we got all these lists of hashtags where in a lot of cases, Cops wasn't even charged. And we and, and this is even, you know what, Philando, Philando Castile. Like things that are obviously wrong to us on film, and these ch cops don't even get charged. This is what our protesting has left these young people. So they're looking at us. It's not about whether I agree with them or not, but they're looking at us like when you tell us that's not the way. So they're fed up to the point where they're saying your way has got a whole bunch of cops. They ain't even... They didn't even go to trial to see if they was going to be guilty or not in a lot of cases. They didn't get past the grand jury. So these young people are saying, okay, you can tell me it's not the way, but you can't show me that your way has worked. Now let's get into what's happened in these last six days because we haven't had protests go this long. Let's be respectful of it. Well, respectful of it from this sense, again, if we haven't given them an answer, here's what the youth are saying to us, and here's how the millennials are moving that I'm impressed by that we're missing. So they've they've sustained these different press. We they hit 40 cities. See, and I and I in 40 cities. That's organization that here's here's what we've confused. You know, we hear about the Antifa, the Antifa organization, which is a left wing, and there's this big idea that they're organizing a lot of things. They are organizing some things. Even when there was in even when there was uh Baltimore, even when there was Ferguson, those organizations showed up. And a lot of times they sometimes, here's the truth, they turn what was going to be a peaceful protest protest. Sometimes they they will come and be provocative and sneak in and start some fires and start some of the violence and some of the damage. Some of the damage. And so even some peaceful protests in the Ferguson's and, and in the Baltimore area ended up turning violent because of them being provocators. Like we've always known that they've shown up in these different situations. And so so they have done that and sometimes turned peaceful protests and, and, and in a sense gave a bad look on different protests. That also happened in our generation. Well, what's happening, this thing, I want y'all to put this in context. Because there's been so many protests and everybody got a camera now, they've been catching these different provocators, whether it be Antifa, whether it's sometimes people think it's the police. And I, so we're seeing them and we were aware of it. Even the news is pointing it out, which is very different in the past, that there's these other provocators that seem to be a part of this. And it's not that they're not. They are a part of it. They're taking advantage of it. They are there with a completely different agenda than the than, than those who are protesting George Floyd's uh, death. So those two things exist. Here's where we're missing the boat. Let me show you. So in the past, when we've had our civil rights movement or our different organizations, whether it be the NAACP, so in the past, uh, Malcolm used to talk about this, that we would have these organizations or these groups, put them together, and we would, in a sense, welcome white allies and unfortunately, sometimes in the past, 
those white allies often would lead, put their money up. And so there was always this idea that too much credence was given to the white allies. Malcolm used to talk about it all the time. And so, so since that was the case, then there will be now people in my generation who, when they put together groups, they would be very leery of um, doing things together with whites, if you will, right? When it comes to these type of issues. And so because that's been our history and because there was this idea that often when whites would get involved, like Malcolm would say, they would mess around and take the lead. So one of the things that people in my generation and younger would reject, even if we, even if there was some type of coming together for some type of situations, it would be a situation. And, and Malcolm would even say, oh, "We left the NOI. You know, they might could help donate, but they can't leave." Sometimes and he said one of his organizations they couldn't even be in. But anyway, that's a dynamic that has always existed for our generation. So the thing that was surprising with these. Um, protest and we was all saying it i hear everybody saying it I don't, I don't watch the news but everybody was saying look how um um diverse the protests were as far as people like this situation it was like everybody was saying this one right here seems different this these protests are a lot diverse it's not just you know the blacks you know i mean it's not so it was very diverse and so in initially People before it turned, before any of them turned violent and it started out peaceful protests, people was kind of giving the millennials props saying, wow, you know, may, you know, for the next generation, they're all coming together and they're fed up and tired. Like we was, people were being positive before anything turned negative. Well, once it started getting violent, once we started getting videos of the Antifa and things of that nature, people started saying this and this is where we're wrong. People started saying these other organizations are controlling it. And these whites are controlling it. We were saying that because of our history. Here's what's going on with the millennials to their credit. So not only were they teaming up with their quote unquote white allies, but I have, I stay in touch with these young people. So a lot of our youth, our African-American youth specifically, in teaming up, they were giving their white allies the man saying, when we do these things, you would only be up front. And if we go beyond peace, y'all will y'all will be the one setting it off. So while Antifa was a part and provocative and there for the wrong reasons, there's reasons why in certain cities you saw all the white kids in front of the black kids. This is it's not about whether I'm agreeing or not. I'm just giving y'all perspectives on where we're missing the boat. So our African American youth in there putting this together, this was their strategies. They've been using strategies that because of our history, we assume, oh, the white kids are running it. No, they're putting them up front. So a credit to them having strategy that because when we see it and because we're used to, if a diverse crowd, maybe the whites are running it and things of that nature, because that's been our history, we're making assumptions about how they're moving. In fact, right or wrong, whether you agree or not, these are strategies that they have. And this is how I know that I'm, I'm right about it. So Antifa, which is a problem, not saying they're not a problem. They are in existence. They've shown up there and everywhere. But again, we've been giving them credit saying, hey, they might be the ones that's so organized because what Antifa does do. I mean, let me, I want to make sure we got some good distinctions here. What they do is in, the, in this being a, you know, whatever you want to call them, extreme group. You know, they're military, you know, a lot of them are military trained. And so when they, you know, burn a building or whatever, they know how to get in and get out and they're not getting caught. So that is where their skill set is. And that that may not be a connection in what the what the protesters are doing. So so they know how to get in and get out. Here's another way that we're being unfair to these youth. So when we're denouncing the for those that are denouncing them, I don't. Not, not, not I don't because I support, just I don't waste time denouncing because I understand their frustration. But in them, in the thing that that's not fair for us specifically as African Americans, even in denouncing them, the protesters, we're lumping those who are looting, who are down there for their wrong intentions, that are not down there for George Floyd. We're, we're lumping them together as if and, and so when we talk about the protest, we tell them protesting 
burning and looting is not the way. The truth is those protesters are organized to the extent that quite often they're not touching black businesses, if you will, but there's always going to be, in a sense, the stepchild of protest is chaos. So you're going to have those who are there taking advantage of it that have nothing to do with the protesters. And we are, are unfair to lump those who go down there with bad intentions to lump them together with the protesters. That's something that we make as a mistake, as a mistake on our part, because that's very unfair to the organizers who are not kicking off violence. And these, whether it be Antifa or whether it be just African Americans who say, hey, they, when they jump off or when it get dark, we're going to bust in and go loot. That's very unfair to lump those together. That's just, you can say you can do that and it's fair, but it's very unfair because these young people are organized. This is how I know they're organized. Because the biggest protest out of all these protests was in Paris. So what's happening is, when I say they're organized, these youth are taking these little phone devices and these computers and getting connected. And this is why the first time in one of these situations we've ever seen this in, in our, for our generation, if there was a protest that turned violent, where would it have been? It would have been all in Minnesota, period. It would have just been in Minnesota, period. Have there been situations where, you know, the Mike Brown situations where other groups outside of the country and other states might, you know, kind of put together and say, you know, Black Lives Matter, um, outside of where the situation went down, yeah, it's happened on a small scale or whatever in, in support. And usually that would be around trial time. Because keep in mind, as I said in the earlier part of this video, the way we've been moving, we would wait all the way to see if the grand jury, jury is only even going to take it to trial. Well, this is what's happened with, right now with these young people when we say this is not the way. So the young people have witnessed not only this guy get taken to jail, but when they started the okie doke and they're going to mischarge him, here's what they've all quite often have done in the past with these police situations. They've either overcharged or undercharged. And it, so even if it got past grand jury, like often it would be a minimal sentence or no sentence because they would overcharge or undercharge. So they started out with the okie doke in Minnesota. They started out with the thir third degree murder, right? That's what they started. For our generation, we'd have been staying mad about the third degree thing hoping it gets to trial and then wait for what BS, we would wait for what BS um, sentence he would get with the third degree murder charge anyway, right? Like that's what would have happened with our generation. Some people didn't stop protesting in one day or two days. They kept protesting to the point where here's what's happening. Now, you we can assume these things are not happening because they're continuing to protest, but here's what's happened and so how the young people will see it even if even if we say these are not connected, here's how the young people see it. So they kept protesting. We watched it go from a third degree to a second degree. We also, what we was also upset about, we was upset about the other char other officers who were standing around and didn't get charged. In our generation, peaceful protests, them cats would still be out right now. That's literally what's always happened. That's what's happened all the way. And the young people growing up and watching this, so they keep protesting. Now, not only do you got a, we've never seen this go from a third degree murder charge to a second degree murder charge. We also see the other policemen now they are arrested. This is so so for the for the young people who says old people whatever y'all saying and telling us not the way we ain't stopping. So in them not stopping, we have watched these transitions. And so for them, even if that is happening for another reason. You can't tell the young people that what they're doing ain't working. Like, I'm just telling, give y'all perspective when we keep telling them not, this not the way, and they're seeing policemen get fired same day body cam. This is what the young people are witnessing why they keep th throwing up a ruckus. So you, we can't even tell them that what they're doing don't work because we don't have these examples. That's being real. So they can, so they saying, we getting police fired the same day for you know the situation here in Atlanta where they pulled a couple out of the fired the same day because of a video. That's brand new, and the young people are saying we gonna keep cutting up 
until we see progress. They getting progress that we ain't got in my 46 years of living. And even if they're not directly corrected, connected to the protest, you can't tell these young people it's not. Because they take the next step. Are you happy now? No, we ain't happy. He got third degree. Now he got second degree. So we raised the charge. Nope. These other officers are not arrested. Now they arrested. I'll be dead. You think with all the way they cut up right now? We done had some go to trial, not many. But you think the way these kids cutting up right now, and they just showing you it ain't just in Minnesota, we'll cut up in 40 cities, all the way to Paris. Paris had the largest, the largest protest. Not a, not a violent, brutal one, but just the biggest protest. So for as much as Antifa is, is in there to sabotage and push their own agenda, Paris is not Antifa's, Antifa's on their agenda. So that's proof in the pudding that these young people are on these devices and the largest protest was in Paris. That's what they're doing. So we're, in our, from, from our viewpoint, while we're we're up we're lumping the the looters and the violence in with the protesters, which is not fair, because the stuff I'm pointing out is how these millennials are moving. They're basically saying, "Forget y'all, we going This keeps happening, and we can't disagree. It keeps happening. We 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 can't tell them another story. We can tell them to do it another way, but what results have we gotten? So." They've organized in their own way in ways we won't give them credit for because we're seeing the looting and burning. So we just keep getting caught up in saying that's not the way. We're missing how well organized the actual people that are organizing the protest are moving, which is millennials. They've said, forget y'all ways. Not only are we going to organize a, a demonstration here, we finna set this thing off in all these cities. And we don't even know what to do with it. So we just sit back and criticize it and missing what they are what they are pulling off. And in me sharing this with you, these are just observations that in me giving them credit for what they're doing has nothing to do with whether I support or not. This is just I'm sharing this because we're missing it. I'm seeing people criticize and realize these millennials are moving entirely different. And not only are they moving entirely different, let's all admit we're seeing these youth say a whole lot of things, unlike a Drew Brees from our generation that's tone deaf as hell, tone deaf as a mother. This, Drew Brees is what we grew up with for every killing and whether it was on cop. We grew up with, grew up with them. And and I mean, and, and let's keep in mind if you're just not seeing him or first time you hear me on a video, no. I don't even really want to spend time going back and forth with the Drew Breeses of the world. They don't, they don't phase me. That's the, what I'm used to. But I just want, we have to admit that while Drew Brees says what he's saying, we've sitting here watching young people. I, I watched some video of some young white girl giving her, to her parents the business on how they think about African Americans. And for me, this is not about, I'm personally, I don't even get caught up in white people recognizing i don't i'm being honest i don't get caught up in them recognizing our plight but we have to admit that amongst these millennials and the way they're moving in unison because again we're we're this we're disregarding this because of the the burning and looting by those who are going to take advantage of it but for the actual people that are organizing the protest and i'm not and i'm here this and when i say the organizers some of them are willing to set it off too so i'm not even trying to act like they ain't a part of none of it. I'm not trying to completely make it separate, like that, because they're willing to go further than we was ever way, able to way, able to go. And the reason they were willing to go further is because what we've been doing has not worked. And as much as we tell them it's not the way, and here's I'll 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 mention this because I mentioned it earlier. And here's when I say it has not worked. See, I'm gonna give a little bit of this. We're gonna go more into this um, on July 4th when I bring on Baba Amin. To just really break down exactly what Martin Luther King was doing back then. And I, I'm pretty sure Martin Luther King wouldn't be using a marching strategy if he was still here. And I'm going to tell you why I say that. Because when he was using that effectively, to his credit. Again, listen on July 4th before I get deeper with it. But to his credit, when he was using that approach with a 
population of about 12, with, you know, African Americans were about 12% back in the 50s, we're about 13.5% now. But he was, he was, he, in my opinion, he was right about with our population being so smart. He studied Gandhi and adopted and said, this is the only way for a population this size as a strategy, not the passive. The, he's, he, LMLK was never passive. That's just how they teach it to us today. But I'll say this in short. He marched quite often back then, knowing that the police and the KKK would be violent to them. So, again, it was a death. It would be a death. Uh, uh, basically a, a suicide for them not to be, um, uh, in a sense, non-violent since they were setting up and starting the protest. But he was counting on the other side being violent. See, JFK was a hands-off. Even though our community loved him back then, if you go study historical context, and, 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 and you know a lot of our people in our community really big were big fans of JFK or whatever, the truth is if you go look at his track record, he was hands-off on the civil rights movement. He only acted when a protest would turn violent. So that's when he would send troops in and start moving the needle. MLK was counting on violence from the other side because they would train activists on how to take licks, how to get yelled at. You you ain't training that if you ain't expecting violence. You ain't training your activists to do that if you're not expecting violence. So the truth is King depended on some level of violence to get his message across because he knew it would create the, the sympathy that he was looking for to get things changed. So he counted on it. So while, yes, he went in nonviolent, again, the training of his activists for sit-ins and things of that nature, the training that was delivered by the SCLC was all in the event knowing that the other side could and would be violent. That was a, a part of it. There is no peaceful protest that we have in our country's history that led to a policy. That's 100% real. I wrote a piece about giving people historical contracts on even the March on Washington, how it had no effect on policy. I'm not going to go into that here. You can go read my piece on my page. Um, but on July 4th, we'll get into a lot of that. But again, I just wanted to do this video to say the millennials are way more they're strategizing more than we're giving them credit for because we're mis we're giving too much credit to the Antifas. We're giving too much credit for those for those who are there just to loot with no purpose. Again, that's always a risk. Even when you attend to protest peacefully, protest the stepchild of protest is chaos. And just because chaos shows up doesn't mean your protest is invalid. Invalid, but that's how we're judging it through our own lens and through our own historical context and not paying attention to literally a, a, de a, a man was killed in Minnesota and the largest protest of them all was in Paris, France. The kids killed. What, what, what we going to, even if they don't get everything they want, what we going to tell them? We got nothing to tell them. Tell me the protest we did that led to a different policy that's improved. We got the body cams and the shit still just kept happening. The big Black Lives Matter, to their credit, they got the body cams. About the, with the biggest credit to Black Lives Matter is the fact that these youth are not afraid to record the cops. The truth is, we just not got brave enough. We didn't grow up with cameras. When them cops say turn them damn cameras off, we would, right? Like that's what we do with the videos. That's what we would do. Black Lives Matter. I always throw this out. It's just one one thing that is a whether you like them or not or disagree with them. I still like to keep facts facts. The reason they were the ones that was teaching the youth and us adults what were the legal legalities of filming the cops, which is okay in most states. But the BLM taught us the legalities of that. You know what I mean? We would just assume when the cop said turn off the camera that we supposed to do it and oblige. The BLM too is the one that taught the entire community it's okay to observe the cops. You know, certain, certain states got different distances and things of that nature, but BLM would go around teaching that. Again, this is not about whether you agree with BLM. It's just that's one thing that came out of their movement. These young people are getting results, at least from their perspective, and we're sitting here missing it. So that was my point of doing this video. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't. Let me see if um, if some of y'all are still on. Uh, Nisha says, even the T.I.s and Killer Mikes, 
they don't care what they are saying either. No, yeah, yeah, that's funny. I mean, you're right, Nisha. Like, 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 you know, we've actually, we to a certain extent within our community, there's a level of embarrassment of how we've always, in a sense, allowed entertainers and athletes to get put out front. And there's always this, you know, this intellectual tug of war of, uh, in a sense, should they be our leaders? And there's valid people that say, well, you don't see athletes and entertainers leaders for other races and other cultures. That is a fair thought or whatever. But since they have influence, we get why a mayor, um, you know, Keisha Bottoms rode out of T.I. and Killer Mike hoping they would have influence. But you're right, Nisha. These young people are saying we fed up and we got our own way of doing things. And I'm just, again, peeping that they're actually way more organized than we've ever ever given them credit for. All right, y'all. That's all I got. Let me see if there's any other comments I missed. That's it. So I'm going to put this on Facebook. Please share this. Uh, check us out on Saturday morning, the Mental Dialogue Talk Show, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, if you just tuned in, you know, got my girl, Korean Gangs, honoring that queen. So many hashtags that... Let's be honest. We ain't, we didn't get results. These young people ain't they not they not laying down. Me saying that is respecting how they're moving. Respecting how they're moving is not even me saying what's right or what's wrong. I ain't really none of us got a, a a place where we can speak because they're getting these actions that I can't speak on. We didn't think of this shit. They did. So I gotta give them credit. Uh, credit what credit is due because we've been missing the boat. Check us out Saturday morning, 10 a.m. right here on my Facebook page on the Mental Dialogue Facebook Facebook page or on IG at mental underscore dialogue in the um, bio, the Mental Dialogue talk show, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. This Saturday is how do we help our black-owned businesses that were damaged or destroyed during the protests. So, we, we are a form that welcomes it all the way. So even though I've done that discussion, we, we're bringing on some, some small business owners so that people understand it ain't as simple as having insurance, especially for our black small business owners. There's more to it. So we want to bring all perspectives. I look forward to bringing on the owners of um, Atlanta Style Bar and Bio Bio um, and just so they can tell their stories and what they're looking to do and revamp and recover from the damage, unfortunately, that was done by... Um, um, you know, some of the the, viol the looters in the looters in Atlanta. That's just keeping it in 100. So we're going to give you both perspectives, but I had to give these young people respect for how they're moving that we've been missing and show how we've been missing it. Uh, with that said, it's Montoya Smith, a.k.a. Black Socrates from the Mental Dialogue Community Club. Real people, real connections, and our motto is simply, all I ask is that you think. I'm out.